the rest of my life. And that's why I say, holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord wherever you are. Hey. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Ah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord wherever you are. Holy. Come and give the Lord praise in the house. Give your holy king a praise. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord wherever you are. Hey. Holy, 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 I say, hey. praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord wherever you are. Hey. Holy, 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 Praise the Lord wherever you are. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, 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 hallelujah. That's why we say you are the same. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. Oh God, you never change Yesterday, today, forever Nobody loves me like you You are the same Yesterday, today, yesterday, today, forever Nobody loves me like you You never, you never change Yesterday, yesterday I worship you. 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 You are the living God. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. My father, you never change. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. I worship you, God. I worship you. I worship you, God. I worship you, God, Jesus. I worship you. You are the living God. Bless the living God in the house this evening. You are the living God. You are, 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 you are the living God. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are the living God.
What a mighty God! What a mighty God! What a mighty God! Hey, oh God, you are the reason for my things. You've been so good to me all along. All along in the end of my life, over has been holding me tight and strong. Ooh, some people think say Jesus has been mad. Who leave out the sky one day? The man who come one leg in Africa, the other one in Japan. God, when you bend down, you say that's right. But no one knows that the Spirit of the Lord, power of Jehovah, is living in you. You better read, read, read it every day from the book of Genesis down to Revelation. The word of the Lord. It's great, love, and we will praise, praise, praise the Lord, and we will praise the Lord in heaven. We say, What a mighty God we serve. Truly, really, truly. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve. Truly, really, truly. What a mighty God. What my son say? What a mighty God we serve! What a mighty God! What a mighty God! We serve Jehovah Shammah. I see you everywhere. Blessed Redeemer, your glory fills the earth. Everlasting Father, the world watches me. I put my confidence in Jehovah Shammah. I said, Jehovah Shammah. I see you everywhere. Blessed Redeemer, your glory fills the earth. Everlasting Father, the world watches me. I put my confidence. living Jesus. Let's appreciate God for this evening. Let's thank him for the opportunity to be here. We bless God. Let's thank him for the privilege to see another month this year. Lord, thank you for this month of February. Thank you, Lord, because we were not consumed in 2020. And here we are in 2021. Lord, you have brought us to the second month. Daddy, thank you because it is not by our power, nor by our might. Almighty God, we say accept our thanks and accept our praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's appreciate God for his grace upon us. Let's thank him for his mercies and for his kindness. Thank him because he is God. Thank him for the salvation of your soul. Thank you for how, you are, how he has delivered you from the power of sin. Let's appreciate him because he has given unto us the power to go and sin no more. Almighty God, to you be the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because we are not saved. O oh, Lord, Father, by our power, it is by grace, O oh God. Blessed be thy name, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's thank God because there is God. He is the one that reigns in the affairs of men. That means he is your God. There is nobody who can claim to be God in your life. People may not like you. People may not love you. People may not wish you well. But the Bible says one with God is a majority. What people say does not matter. As long as you are with God, that is the person that is the most important personality in your life. Let's appreciate him because he's with you always. Because his thought to us is not the thought of evil. But of peace to give us an expected end. Thank you because your thoughts towards us is not the thought of evil. 
but it is of peace because you want to give us an expected end. Thank you, Almighty God, because your thoughts towards us is not the thought of evil. It is of peace to give us an expected end. To you be the glory, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are going to ask God this evening that the word of God we will hear will not be letters unto us. The Bible says the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. It is the spirit of God that will give us life. It is the spirit of God that will bring forth this word of God in our lives. It is this word of God that can change us, that can make us what he wants us to be. Lord, I pray that the word that I will hear this evening will not be letters unto me, but it will give me life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word make me what you want me to be. Let your word make me what you want me to be, Lord. Let your word make me what you want me to be. Let your word mold me. Let it shape me. Let it make me what you want me to be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you, Lord, this evening. Lord, accept our thanks and accept our praises in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless you, Lord, because you are God that reigneth in the affairs of men. You are the God that can do exceeding abundantly, much more than we we'll ask or think of. The Bible says, according to your power that worketh in us. Almighty God, to you be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. This evening, Lord, we've come to land at your feet. I pray, Lord, that the world we will hear will not, O oh Lord Father, be witnessed against us on the judgment day in Jesus' name. That this word of God will make us what you want us to be. As beneficiary of your mercy, that you will help us, O oh Lord, to show forth your mercy unto people around us, like you did while you were on earth, and even much more, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please let's have a seat and God bless us in Jesus' name. By the grace of God this evening, you know our time is very short and good enough. We all have the outline. So if there's anything we cannot touch or cover very well, you can on your own study. The Bible, after all, the Bible says we should study to show ourselves what? Approve unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly what? Dividing the word of truth. So that we can also be like the Berean Christian. What well, the pastor will preach to you on the pulpit is good. It is a guide unto you. You are the one that will take on the word of God yourself. Study yourself to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing words, the word of truth. Having said that, this evening our topic is the mercy of God. We are in the month of mercy, and our text is taken from Lamentations 3, 22 to 25. I don't know if uh, the engineers can help us to project Lamentations 3, 22 to 25. Otherwise, if there's anyone that can read, I will appreciate that as well. Lamentations 3, 22 to 25. I also want someone to read if the engineers are not, engineers are not projecting early enough. Is there anyone like that that wants to read for us? Lamentations 3, 22 to 25. Somebody can read. Browse us. You want to help us? You are still searching. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At least there are like two things I picked, and I think much more. He said it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not what? Consumed. Because <laughs> we are all alive today. The thing that has taken some of our friends, family members, away. You understand? Some of those things have happened to some of us, and we are still alive today. More so when you sleep. How many of us really know what is going You are sleeping, and then you know what is going on. That means you are not sleeping. Is that not? You can't be sleeping, and then you also know what is happening what, to you. So, to think that we are still alive today, you know, to think that we've gone through some things that some other people have gone through, and God has kept us, it tells us that it is of the Lord's mercy, not because of our power, that we are not what, consumed. Now, one of the things that amazes me as a person is this. By the grace of God, I want to believe that we are born again. Is that not? But before we gave our life to Christ, we were all sinners, right? At one time or the other, we were sinners. And again, God had mercy upon us, saved us, and then 
we started following Christ. But what about those who were not particularly older than us, but they died younger than we are, but they just never had the privilege of hearing this word of life or getting saved? How do you explain it? And yet the Bible says that it is only through Jesus Christ that you can do what? That you can make it to heaven. Because the Bible says it's appointed unto man to do what? To die only once. And after that it is what? It is judgment. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. That no one cometh unto the Father except what? Except by me. So, apart from that, as many of us have been saved, if you look at the so many benefits of salvation, you ask yourself, you cannot claim that you are better than so many people around you. I've seen people who are more moral than us. People that when it comes to being obedient, they are more obedient than us. When you say this person is a good person, they are better than us. Am I communicating? But you see, God picked some of us that were even worse than them. And then he had mercy upon us and then he saved us. And as many as God has saved, the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creature. That all things are passed away and behold, all things are what? They have become new. Then the moment we give our life to Christ, we start enjoying the benefit of salvation. Not because we are qualified, but because of what? The mercy of God. The mercy of God is sovereign. We need to understand that and free. Mercy does not come to man or to a particular man because, something, because of something he has done. But it is due only to who? To God. So we have, God has not shown us mercy because, oh, he is good. It is not a reward for something that we have done. So then, according to Romans 9, 9 to 15, there is a place there. If you read Romans 9, 9 to 15, so then it is not of him that will learn, of him that what? Run it. But of God that show what? what? Mercy. So it is not about your will. It is not about your ambition. It is not about your vision. It is all about what? The mercy of God. So it is not because when the Bible says that it is not of him that will let, that means it's not about your vision. It's not about your own ambition. And it goes further to say, nor of him that run it, not even by the work of your hands. Because the Bible says all, all our work is like work. It's like a filthy rag. You understand? So it's not even by our work, but God that show what what? Mercy. It is purely but the mercy. It is nothing but the mercy of God. So the prophet says it is it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. He says that God's mercy is a power which preserves us all through thick and thin in different seasons of life till we get to the promised what land. There are some of us that will have given up on certain things in our life, but God has been merciful to keep us. Some people almost got to their destination, either to the promised land. They would have given up. But for the mercy of what? The mercy of God that saw us through. And that same mercy is available today. And I pray that as we reach out to him, we will get that mercy in Jesus' name. Divine mercy stands closely related to God's pity. It is like God having compassion on you. Not because you merit it. You know, so many times during the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible will say, and he was moved with what? Compassion. He was moved with what? Compassion. He was moved with what? Compassion. Jesus was always moved with compassion. That means he was merciful, tenderness, and loving words, kindness. And I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, quick, very quickly, we need to understand the following. Number one, we need to understand the following about the mercy of God. Number one is that the mercy of God is great. It is above the heavens. Why? Because it is not something that you are qualified for. You are not qualified for the mercy of God. You understand? It is abundant. It's how great that mercy must be when we consider the depths out of which it has taken us and the eyes to which it has what? Raised us. Second Chronicles 1 8. Someone can read for us quickly. Second Chronicles 1 8. Anybody who is there can read it. Second Chronicles 1 8. Our engineers, if you can project along, that would be wonderful, please. Second Chronicles 1 8. God bless you, sir. Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shown great mercy unto David, my father. We all know the kind of sin that David committed. This was somebody who committed what? Adultery. I'm sure some people did not do that before God, you know, Old Testament, before God, will, before they will be taken away. So, but the good thing is that Solomon, who is even the son, he could recognize the mercy of God on his father. It was a great mercy. 
Because for that mercy, maybe Solomon himself would not even be alive. God could have made it such that Solomon would not even be born. Talk less of saying Solomon would be king. The mercy of God is great. It is not something that we merit. It's not something that you can explain. Especially once you are a child of God, you need to understand that that mercy of God is always what? Available for you. So we don't have to relent on, we don't have to rely on our power, on our strength. Because the Bible says, by strength shall no man what? Prevail. Number two is that God is not merciful to every single individual, but only to those whom he has chosen unto faith, obedience, and what? Salvation. What qualifies us for the mercy of God, the divine mercy of God, is salvation. Because we have been saved. That's what qualifies us for the mercy of God. There are so many things, either you like it or not, that happen to you as a child of God, that you only benefit from those things because you are a child of God. Somebody who is not born again, somebody who has not given his or her life to Christ, will never have such a privilege. There are signs when you are almost running into crisis, and then you call upon God, because he said, call upon me and I will answer you. He said, I will show you great and mighty things that what? That you know not. And when you call upon him, God will be merciful on you. And then you ask yourself, what have I, I've seen people who have done things that ordinarily, you know, some other people did not do up to that. And the kind of consequence they have. But when somebody is a child of God, the mercy of God can prevail. The mercy of God can prevail. And you enjoy that mercy only because you are a child of God. So if you are here this evening and you have not surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will see that you are the one that is losing out. Because those who are in the kingdom already, there are certain things they enjoy today that you may not be able to enjoy. And the reason is simple. Because you have not surrendered your life to his what? To his lordship. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Number three, the mercy of God is unchangeable. The great I have never changes in his desire to deliver and bless. He never removes his mercy from his what? Children. Psalm 66, 20. Someone can read as well. While someone is trying to read, I think some of us should be ready to read. You know, Psalm 66, 20. Yes. Which has not turned away my prayer, nor is what? Is mercy from me. Most of us who are sitting down here, we know that if it is not for the mercy of God, do you know that some of us, even after we have given our, how many, of, how many times have you said, I plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If it is not for the mercy of God, we will not even remain in the kingdom today. But the mercy of God is so strong that God is not human. He can easily forgive he can easily forget and he can forget about the old things the bible says if any man be in christ is a new creature the word of god says all things are what they are passed away that can only happen with god and the older things are what have become new because god and when those things become new god is unchangeable towards you somebody how do you explain somebody who has killed before i once met a man who today is a preacher of the word of god who had killed before you understand he was a highway robber I'm not talking about this is something he said with his mouth it was a highway robber somebody who has stopped on the highway killed people and today that same person is now a preacher of the gospel of Christ how do you explain it what of people that demand that they are the man killed you know I mean this man it was so much that this same man that I'm talking about one day after he had given his life to Christ he was just sharing his testimony and he said he was in one hotel, I think it was in Benin City. He went for a program and some thieves came into that hotel. He said the moment he had that gun, he could tell the kind of gun that they brought because that was, that was what he was doing before. But today, that kind of person, God can look at him and say, look, I have forgiven you. That can only happen by what? By the mercy of God. Number four is that the mercy of God is new every morning. You need to understand that that mercy of God is what? It's new every day. That's why we can wake up every day. We can call upon him and he can answer us. We can make our request. And you know, he will act in unto us. Most of this same God tells us. He said, command me yet the works of what? Of my hands. We can ask of God whatever we want because what? His mercy is new every morning, every day. We are refreshed by His mercy every morning and new. What mercy of God is, is in sending His only begotten Son into this world of woe and to shameful, bitter death of the cross? The reason why He sent His Son 
into the world is because of you and I. Jesus Christ came. If God is not merciful, how could he have sacrificed his only son, his only begotten son? Somebody who is not a sinner. And then being sacrificed for what? For sinners. That tells you that God himself is an epitome of mercy. He's an embodiment of mercy. He's full of mercy. Am I communicating? God himself, there is no other way to describe God. If you say God is love, you are right. If you say God is mercy, he's full of what? He's a merciful God. He's a compassionate God. And I pray that God will help us to be like our Father in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ was made to be merciful unto us. The only reason why Christ died and came into the world, why he came into the world and died for us, is because God brought him forth as an embodiment of mercy. If you go to Hebrews 2, 17, let's read quickly, Hebrews 2, 17. Hebrews 2, 17. Can someone read for us as well? Hebrews 2, 17. And then someone should get ready, Hebrews 4, 15. Hebrews 2, 17, first of all. Hebrews 2, 17. Praise the Lord. That I might be a faithful and merciful what? I priest. So Jesus is a merciful. Then 415, quickly. Is a faithful and merciful high priest. Hebrews 415. Praise the Lord. Do you know that one of the reasons why Jesus Christ is unique is because he knows what we are going through. You know sometimes, part of the difficulty people may have, sometimes you try to understand, you try to explain. People don't just understand what you are going through. But here is somebody who came, who, was, who is God, and who came in the form of a human being. And he passed through the things that we are passing through. So he can understand our emotions. He knows what we are going through at any point in time. That's why he can be merciful. He can be what? Compassionate. If you see somebody who has never been hungry before, somebody that everything has always been, you know, under their, in their back and call, before they ask for anything, they have it. They've never been hungry. And there are a few people like that in the world, either will like it or not. If somebody now says that, as a matter of fact, some of our prayers in Africa, and particularly also in Nigeria, is strange to some people. When you start praying, God, please, uh, I don't have what to eat. Somebody, I'm sure some people, it will be strange. Is this prayer? And I'm not kidding. That's the truth. To some people, it is not prayer. How can you be praying for what you're going to eat? Because it is not a problem. Yet, that is the prayer of some of us. But you know, while that person that is beside you, who has never been hungry before, may not understand, Jesus Christ can understand what it means to be what? To be hungry. Some of us here today, people can come to you for certain help. The reason why you can help them is probably because you have gone through what they are going through before. I want to believe that part of the reason, and I think Pastor has said it indirectly, why he's doing some of the things he's doing in the church today is because of what he has also what, gone through himself. So when somebody says he's hungry, if you have been hungry before, you know what it means to be what? To be hungry. If hunger don't catch you before, where you go to walk like this, you'll be seeing men like trees. Or you don't know. I'm not, you are not fasting, no. It is hunger. You are seeing men like what? Trees. Then when somebody comes to your house and it's almost falling off, you are not likely going to shut the door against that person and say, go away. Because you have been hungry before. And if you have also been hungry before, you know sometimes when you are hungry, you are not mentally stable. As a matter of life, they say, I'm, I think brother, brother Roy normally quotes that, I say an angry man is an angry man. You understand? You can just be angry. Have you not seen it that when you are, <laughs> when you are hungry, you can just be angry. And then when you now finish eating, your body will now come down. <laughs> I mean, or some of you don't experience it. Your body will now come down. Maybe that's why women, when they want to ask their husband, sometimes they make sure that they've served the food and then they ask. Because when the man is hungry, he cannot think very well, he cannot see very well. Sir? Uh, 
You understand? So because Christ went through what we have gone through, then it can be what? It can be merciful. Honestly speaking, either we like it or not, there are things we go through that nobody can ever understand. I'm telling you. Because look, even you sometimes, do you know that you don't even understand yourself? There are times you'll be saying, what exactly? I don't understand myself. And you know what? God understands you even more than you understand yourself. Because he's a merciful God. And because he suffered and there is no hardship that is worse than, you know, the kind of hardship that he has gone through. He can relate with us. He can understand. And I pray that that same God will continue to be merciful unto us in Jesus' name. And then very quickly, number two, and this is where we're going. You know why? Because the first point, understanding the, understand the following about the mercy of God. For me, it's not an issue. You know why? God remains faithful. He remains what? Merciful. Most of said, as many as will come to him, he will no wise what? Cast out. He's not going to draw anybody away. But when we come to God and we receive the mercy of God, what do we then do with that mercy? And that is why a lot of us have issues. Because all those who receive, number two, all those who receive mercy of God have a calling. Let me tell you, there are times, you see, no matter what has happened to you in form of good things that has happened to you as a Christian, do you know that it is an investment into our lives? Or you don't know? If God has been merciful unto us, he expects us to go forth and do what? And show mercy unto what? Unto others. If we say we have given our life to Christ, and I'm sorry to say, the only way people can describe us is that we are so heartless, people can say we are wicked, then we should check the salvation that you have received. Because if you have received of the mercy of God, you also will be what? You will be merciful unto others. I mean, the truth is this. You could have died a sinner. There are so many things that you have done that, but for God, you will not even be alive today. So if God has been so merciful unto us, then he is telling us, there's a calling for all of us, that we should also go and what? And be merciful unto others. So that we don't be like that parable of the servant in the Bible that was forgiving. You understand? And then he refused to forgive, uh, who? he refused to forgive someone else. Somebody that was owing him. Some people are like that. You are owing somebody. How much? 100,000 naira. Uh, Brad Goke, don't worry. Just leave that money. And then you have collected 100,000 naira. You now get home. Somebody is now owing you 1,000 naira. If you don't give me that money, you will see what will happen today. I mean, how do you describe such a person? If, even if you are not a good person, sometimes a man will be happy in his life. The fact that you just receive 100,000 naira that is not your own. Shouldn't you be happy enough to be able to release 1,000 naira to another person? So, the mercy of God is like that. God has shown us mercy and is calling us, his children, to go and show mercy unto others. Number one, God's mercy is first and having tasted of that wonderful mercy of God in Jesus Christ, we have the calling to be merciful. We are to love and delight in showing what? Mercy unto others. Either we like it or not, that is what to characterize our life as a child of God. Luke 6, 35 to 36, very quickly. Luke 6, 35 to 36, very quickly. The Bible says, thank you, sir. Thank you, I've, I've got it. The Bible says we should love our enemies. You know, <laughs> the Bible, let me tell you something. The, 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 I don't think what is important is about what we want from God. I think the higher calling is for us to be able to obey God. You know why? Because if we obey God, certain things we have no option, you understand, to answer to us. Is it easy to be merciful or to forgive your enemies? You understand what I'm saying? But that is what God is saying. Talk less of somebody who is now not your enemy. If we find it difficult to show mercy, somebody, that person has not offended you, what of the person that has gone to pastor to lie against you? Brother Roy said this. Say, ah, Amaka said that. Amaka will see. It is me and Amaka in this church. You know, it is odd. And you didn't do it. It is painful. It is very difficult to ordinarily what? Show mercy unto that kind of person. Yet, God is saying we should be merciful unto others. Some of us have been beneficiary of mercy, but we find it difficult to show mercy unto others. I once know of someone, I mean, who, by, I knew that, you know, he gave his life to Christ, and then he, as far as I'm concerned, and the little I know, I believe that he was a beneficiary of God's mercy. 
Because number one, as at that time, his parents were separated. The church, practically, and when I say the church, maybe brethren in the church, were the one practically responsible more or less for his school, for his help. Sometimes he would even sleep in their houses. And thank God for his life. He, God so helped him. He went ahead, became a graduate himself. He even went ahead at some point, went to do his master's. Somebody that it is, I can tell you that it has no input of his parents, but just because of mercy, because of being in the church. And then there was a time he was talking. I think at some point he rented a house. And then he was single at that time, was living. And then there was another brother who was now living with him. And he was complaining. He was saying, hey, he's cutting with me. He doesn't do this. Doesn't. I just kept quiet. I'm like, you know, I couldn't tell him. You understand? But in my, to my mind, I'm like, but you are a, I, was, I wasn't telling him more. <laughs> But in my mind, I was saying that you are a product of mercy yourself. It is practically church that took care of you. It is practically brethren in the church that sent you to school. I'm not saying this for anything. Some of us, you will call us. We will send money to you just for you to be okay. Sometimes you come to us. We give you full stuff. And I'm not, it's not me now that sent him to school. Don't go and say, I'm coming to read my CV to you. Uh -huh. I'm saying brethren in the church and sometimes pastor in the church we say they know him in church he has problems I mean they practically sent him to me who should show mercy to others other than that kind of person because to my mind I couldn't comprehend it I was thinking about it you are a product of mercy people practically took care of you why is it difficult for you to accommodate another brother and be merciful unto that person and then he was complaining to another brother and that one was telling him you have to do this you have to do this I was looking at the two of them but I couldn't understand what they are talking about. Because what it means is that if God has shown you mercy, he expects you to do what? To go and show that mercy unto others. That's the way it works. That is the way it works. If God has been, and there is none of us here that God has not been merciful unto. If God has been merciful unto us, he expects us to go forth and do what? And show that mercy unto others. That is how people will know that you are a Christian. He said, by this shall men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love what? One another. Where is the love of Christ in the church today? I'm being very honest with you. If, honestly speaking, if we cannot show that love to ourselves, it's as if our salvation is in vain. That is the way it should work. This was somebody that I knew. I knew everything about him. I knew how everything. His parents were not there for him. Nobody was there. It was the church that practically took care of him. And then you now, God help you. You became something, you rented the place. Accommodate someone was a problem. I couldn't understand it. You understand? But by the grace of God, the person that I was supposed to accommodate, God eventually helped that one too. He became a graduate himself. The guy got job in the bank and all of that. He's okay. If you were to call him today, he doesn't even need his help. Sometimes when people need our help, it is for a time. There will come a time when the person that is asking for your help today will not need that help tomorrow. Even if you want to give it, we say it's not necessary. Because he doesn't need it. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Secondly, we are to show mercy towards others, especially towards those who are in need. We are to be moved by the plight of the widows, the orphans, and the poor. Galatians 6.10, very quickly. Galatians 6.10. Good. Let us go, do good unto all men especially those of them who are of the household of faith. That's why we go out of our way to help ourselves. As we are all sitting down now, we don't know ourselves from anywhere, maybe. But Christ brought us together. And the truth is that some of us are even closer to each other than our siblings. That's the way it should be. But I will hard. Take no advantage of that. Because sometimes when people now see that, oh, and because we are in church, you are now taking advantage of them. You shouldn't do that. You are not a beggar. Even if you ask some money today, it doesn't mean that you will continue to ask. It is for a time. Everything is for a time. If you are a child of God, you can be in position where you are asking for help today. You can be in position tomorrow where you are the one giving help to so many other people. But don't take advantage of people. You understand what I'm saying? If you do that, let me tell you, you are doing harm to yourself. Because you know what? God has not made you... I mean, <laughs> the fact that you are asking for help does not mean that you are nobody. Because your future is bright as a child of God. The Bible says, though thy beginning be small, but thy later end shall greatly what? Increase. So some of us don't understand this thing, that there is a psychology and there is a faith about it. Some of the things we say, some of the ways we behave. There are certain behavior you do that you are arming yourself. You are not a beggar, you are not a non-entity, you are not a nobody. Understand that very well. 
if you need help like pastor always say you need help when a man needs help he needs what help and don't shy away from it you understand what i'm saying but as god helps you know fully well that that is not your boss talk the plan of god towards you is not the thought of his, his thought is not the thought of you but of peace to give you what an expected end so that expected end that glorious end is there and it's available for a child of god and if you know that your attitude towards material things will not be such that you'll be you'll be idolizing those things it is for a time everybody will be fine by the grace of god and i pray that that will be our portion in jesus name we are to pray to god every day making confession and making petition based on his mercy in jesus christ do you know the parable of the pharisee and the publican you understand one said oh god be merciful to me the sinner some of us you don't need to start brandishing your cv i'm the best i'm that i'm that look a simple prayer of lord have mercy on me can do the magic by the time somebody is reeling out his cv somebody will come lord just have what mercy on me and what do we need it is for god to answer our prayers and when god answers your prayers the evidence will be there and that's all you need so it doesn't matter there's no point trying to be holier than thou trying to prove to god that you are righteous when the Bible says all our righteousness is what? It's like a filthy rag before him. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. We need to be merciful unto others. You know, we need to understand that. We are to sing of the mercies of God. Make melody in your heart. Make melody with your family and in church. Psalm 89 verse 1, very quickly, which is the last point. I will... Okay, go ahead, sir. Honestly speaking, that should be the summary of our life as a child of God. I will sing of the mercies of God forever. Because, look, if you are a child of God, the mercy of God must summarize your life. Because you must think of a time in your life when you are nobody. If it has not happened to you, if you have given your life to Christ, and you have been as good as you were before you gave your life to Christ, God has not added anything to you. Then, I don't understand. You should check why you have given your life to Christ. You understand? Is it Apostle Paul that said, I am whom I am? By what? By the, grace of, by the grace of God or something. You understand? So, as a child of God, it is the plan of God for you to be great. But no matter how great you become, you will always remember that with, before God, you are what? You are nobody. That it is only God that has made you whatever or whoever you are in your life. That is the truth. And let me tell you, some unbelievers understand that secret. There are unbelievers who give glory to God for everything that has happened to them. There are unbelievers who will not personalize and say, this is who I am. They will just give glory to God, if not for God, they this, this. Those things help. They are prayers on their own. Because God will continue to support such a person. What you are saying is that you are acknowledging God. You don't take glory that does not belong to you. Some of us, when somebody has helped you, to even say thank you or acknowledge is a big problem. And let me tell you something. If you are like that, you are doing yourself. It does not take anything away from you to thank somebody who has helped you, who has been of help. It can be somebody who is younger than you. If somebody has helped you, he has helped you. You could not do that thing or help yourself. And that person did that help. Please, don't be too big to thank somebody for the help that they have rendered unto you. Some of us are cheating ourselves. If you are too proud to say thank you to God, if you cannot say thank you to your fellow human being, I'm sorry to say, maybe you should not bother to go and tell God thank you. Because God is not in support of that. It means that you are proud. It means there is no other way to describe it. You are what? You are proud. If you cannot thank people for what they have done for you, be ready to thank people. And let me tell you, those who give thanks, either you like it or not, they always have a way that more come to them. I'm telling you, it is just normal, it is logical. People that you have said thank you to, if they are in position tomorrow again, they will want to help you. And so, if people are like that, how much more God, who has been merciful unto us? And the greatest way you can thank God is to go forth and show what? Mercy yourself, because we are product of mercy. And if you have been product of mercy, please let's go forth and show mercy unto others. There are people around us, there are things that we have that can be beneficial to others. Some of us hold on to those things as if we are going to live in this world forever. When you can sleep this night and you may not wake up tomorrow, that thing that you are keeping, I don't know what will happen to it. People will take over. Trust me. People will do what? People will do what? They will take over.
People will cry, 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 cry. That's the end. Though. In fact, why they are crying? Say, say, you won't kill yourself. They say, there is a carol. Come on and take care. You say, okay, okay. <laughs> that means those of us who are alive, we are not ready to die for another person. Are you ready to die for another person? A lie. You go to graveyard. Ah, ah, leave him. Let him enter. He won't enter. Na lie. Eh? So we can only be merciful to ourselves now that we are still alive. And I pray that God will reward us in Jesus' name. In conclusion, by His mercy, God has chosen us. By His mercy, He has redeemed us. By His mercy, He has begotten us again unto a lively hope. We are commanded to show forth His mercy to others, and by so doing. It multiplies in our lives by showing mercy unto others. It does what? It multiplies in your lives. And I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's be on our feet as we appreciate God this night. As we ask Him to please make us, sir. Okay, maybe we take that. Okay, let's quickly take Brother Lugard. Yeah, because of time, but it's okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, let me understand. When you say he has chosen or called into the ministry, as in he has called to be pastor or what? Okay, first of all, I mean, I'll try and answer my own way. The, Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think I understand your question. I'll try and answer it. So, I mean, the way I look at it is this. You are like, okay, so when God says, it's like, maybe if I understand it very well, the other way to look at it is to say, is God partial? When he will say he has shown mercy, am I right? When he says he has shown mercy unto others, when he says, I will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. But do you know that? People and even though we say God will show mercy on whom, whom is going to show mercy, do you know people earn it? Either you like it or not, people earn it. David earn it. You understand? Because the Bible talks about David, even though as a king, you know, he was not mindful of anybody around him. He was always praising God. He was not ashamed of God. Like Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He said, Because it is the power of God unto salvation. Yes, he served for the punish. Oh, hold on, hold on. He served for the punishment. It's just like okay, okay. He served that punishment, but it could have been worse than that. After all, some people said did not finish. More, more. Miraj said he's supposed to die. The punishment could have been worse than that, sir. It's like you, sir. You have children. One of them has done. Two of them have done something wrong. It is natural. There's one of them. You said what you have done is wrong, and before you know it, he's already prostrating. Mommy, I'm sorry. Mommy, I. You know, sometimes even that one can move you. Say, this boy. The another one is not like that. You understand what I'm saying? You'll be like, I'm going to punish this boy today. Do you get what I'm saying? So we can also attract that mercy of God. The Bible says, by their fruit, ye shall what? Know them. So we don't take the mercy of God for granted or the grace of God for granted. Even our own behavior can decide if we are going to attract that mercy of God or not. Bradoy, finally, because of time. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, and maybe the other way to put that is that David, okay, recognized that he was a sinner. He repented. You understand? He repented. You know, man looks at the outward, but God looks at what? The inward. God sees our hearts. Let's not forget. Much more than, and you see, as human beings, it is not impossible that we relate with ourselves based on what we can see. But God is the one that knows the innermost of our hearts. God knew that David repented genuinely. And if somebody repents, you know, God has no choice but to be merciful to that person. I hope this is your question will end. How do you know? Let, let me tell you something. The Bible says, Ma? They said they have answered you. Mommy is telling you, don't delay us. <laughs> Mommy, you want to answer? Oh, okay. So I thought that was what he said. Okay. Do, 
Don't give microphone to Brother Lugado because we want to leave here today. No, don't, hold on, hold on, sir. I will just say a few things because of time, Brother Lugado, we, we will not finish today. Look, I think people have tried to answer your question. And what I will tell you, sir, is that, look, mommy said something. He said, uh, if you walk by the Spirit, you understand. How do you know people who, are, who God has called? You see, you don't take the grace of God for granted. This mercy of God that we're talking about, I've told you, people earn it. Because the Bible says, by their fruits, ye shall what? Know them. Let me tell you, for me, if I want to know, I'm sorry to say, this is me now. Miracle that a man of God performed does not move me. So, I can go anywhere, if you like, let people be tumbling, let people be, I am not moved by those things. You know what moves me? I've studied the Bible. It is how that person, the words, the actions, what that person is doing for me that confirms if you are a child of much more than anything. I'm telling you the truth. So, if you like, some assault, if you like, do this, if you like, do that. It is our behavior, it is the way we live that confirms if we are what? If God has truly called us or not. For example, you see, I'm sorry to say, some men of God today are too big that they cannot apologize that is not a what's the meaning of that <laughs> that is not an if you see a genuine man of God the way you will know them when a genuine man of God even when he does wrong to someone even if it is the least of us the person will apologize that's one of the marks what do we want again the person will apologize he will not say this is who I am because we are nobody God is the Lord of everybody a man of God that has done something wrong must be I've heard of a big man of God in the country today, one of the biggest men of God. He said he did something to one of the pastors following him. And later God told him that what he did was wrong. He called some of the other ministers and they went to that man of God. They went to apologize. But if I say because of position today, I am too big to apologize. I mean, that is look, let me tell you something. The greatest way for somebody to fall is for you to get to a level where nobody can talk to you again. All of us should pray that we don't get to a point where nobody can talk to us again. Because, I'm sorry to say, sometimes, temporarily, people have some madness. But you should, when people speak to you, you should, you should be able to come back to your words, senses, and apologize when you are wrong. Brother Lugard, or Pastor Lugard, don't let us go into... Con you see, what I always tell people when people ask too much questions is this. How much of the ones that are straightforward have we obeyed? The word of God is very simple and straightforward. And if we obey that word of God, we will have peace. And I pray that we will have peace in Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet as we appreciate God and pray. Because if you leave Brother Lugard, we will not live here today. <laughs> Let's thank God for the opportunity to learn at his feet. Let's pray that God will be merciful unto us. That as he has shown us mercy that we will also be merciful unto others around us in the name of Jesus, that all of us will be so big that we cannot apologize to others. It is part of the mercy. Eh? We can, and yet, sometimes we are wrong. Nobody knows it all. Let's pray that God help me, Lord, that I will, as a beneficiary of your mercy, be merciful unto others as well. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you for this privilege. We pray, Lord, that the word that we have had you magnify it in our lives, O oh God. And Lord, you will help us to be merciful even unto others around us in Jesus' name. And to live a life that will attract your mercy constantly all the days of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you all in Jesus' name. It is Brother Lugard that dragged us. We could have finished before now. Thank you. Let us stretch forth our hands to the, our pastor and begin to pray for him that this word has gone out of him today. He will not come back to haunt him. And God Almighty will replenish every virtue that has gone out of him. And God will bless him and bless his family. And let us tell God that the mercy of God will speak for him and his family. And everything that concerns him, the mercy of God will, will speak for him. Father and my God, that the Lord, let your mercy speak for your son, speak for his family. Let this word not stand against him on our judgment day. That the Lord Almighty, everywhere you look at, let mercy speak for him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. 
Let us bring out our offering as we give to the Lord. Oh, Lua, eto mi, eto mi, oh, eto mi. Oh, Lua, eto mi, eto mi, oh, eto mi. Kusini tali ki, shaka mi ba. Eto mi, kusini tali ki, shaka mi ba. giving us the opportunity to give to you today. As we have given to you, Daddy Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you give back to us individually and collectively in Jesus' name. Daddy Lord Almighty, as many that don't have to give, please provide for them in the name of Jesus. Accept us and accept our offering today. In Jesus' wonderful name I have prayed. Amen. Please let's sit down and listen to the following announcement. Tomorrow, Wednesday, is our house fellowship. If you, go through some of the, if you go through the back of the bulletin, we have some for Sunday and some for Wednesday. The ones that are for Wednesday is tomorrow at the various centers, 6 to 7 p.m. And on Thursday, we have faith clinic. Let us come and pray until something good happens in our life and thank God for the fasting. This is a time to pray. And God of mercy, we answer us in Jesus' name. Faith Clinic is from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. On Friday, Holy Ghost service. We are, going to, we are going to link up with our daddy on the different media venue and on our TV. There is no, we are not gathering. We bless us in Jesus' name. Evangelism on Saturday by 4 p.m. 4:30 p.m. Please let us be here to evangelize and win more souls for Christ. And I know that as we win more souls for Christ, we will not lose our rewards in Jesus' name. On Sunday is Thanksgiving service. Our service to remain three. The first one by 7:30 a.m. The second one by 9 a.m. and in between the second and the third service, we have Sunday school by 10.30 a.m. Then on, by 11 a.m., we have the third service. Any of this service you come to, I know and I am sure that the God of miracle will meet you at the point of your needs in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let us be on our feet as we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, goodness, and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.